Hey there YouTube, I'm Bubbins, and today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about those dreaded daily activities in Final Fantasy XIV. I'm the first to admit that I have ignored some of them for a long, long time. And now that I'm a thousand hours in, I find myself wishing I had given them more attention in the past. So I figured it'd be a good thing to share with you all. Let me start off with the one I ignored the most, my leveling roulettes. Rather than take advantage of a big daily treasure trove of XP, I instead just focused on doing main story quests and unlocking new activities. But it turns out once you do all of that, you're back to needing a ton of XP if you want to max out your other combat classes. The MSQ essentially offers two full rank ups. Uh, so pro tip, level up two classes at a time. I only did one and wasted a ton of XP. But either way, take it from me and squeeze these roulettes in whenever you can, uh, especially if you're one of the classes that need like a healer or a tank. I specifically recommend the leveling roulette, the trials roulette, and the front lines roulette, as those tend to give the most XP per minute. You can usually get all of those done in under an hour, which is pretty great. Anything beyond that, like the main story, roulettes, and all that stuff should be saved for dedicated grinding sessions. It's always a good option to have though, because I'm very much over grinding the same 10 Palace of the Dead levels over and over. At the very least, if you do your leveling roulettes as much as possible from the moment you start the game, you'll spread out the pain and actually do something different most of the time. On the other side of the coin is something I did a ton of and it made my life so much easier. As soon as you can, unlock your grand company and do the supply and provisioning missions. They're an incredibly underrated method of grinding your crafting and gathering classes. Every day it will ask you for a specific item or items depending on your class's level. And oftentimes these can just be purchased on the market board for incredibly low prices and quickly turned in as a really fast XP farm. Keep in mind that high quality items are worth double the XP in seals. So if there's a HQ version for cheap, get that. Uh, and start items are worth even more. At a minimum, I try to turn in the start items each day. They're just so valuable for so little time. If you have the money to spare, just do it. If you find the item is too expensive on your market board, look into crafting it yourself or hop on over to Universalist to check the markets on your data center and beyond. By doing these turn-ins, I ranked up every single one of my crafting and gathering classes to level 70 without ever having done any outside grinding. Granted, that is over months and months, uh, but 80% of that progress was spent simply purchasing the items I needed and never really needing to do anything painful. Oh, and stop trudging back and forth between the marketplace and the grand company rep. Just check your timers. The list is right there. You can even open it while you're in the market board. Another thing I recommend, whether you have two or eight retainers, is to send them out. Send them out. Even if you don't upgrade their gear as they level up because it's too expensive, the grind to level 90 is long and the increased odds of a venture coffer is very, very far away when you first start. You'll thank yourself down the line if you ever do get into gathering and don't feel like going out to get the materials yourself as well. Pro tip, if you're going to be around for at least three to four hours, send your retainers on quick ventures and send them back as soon as they return. If you can't do that, it's better to send them on those longer 18 hour ventures because those give roughly the same XP as three quick ventures. I'll also be the first to admit that I have never used leaves enough. I still don't. I was happy enough with my passive supply and provisioning missions that I never really bothered with these. Uh, looking back though, I have basically just left an incredible amount of money on the table. And that's of course ignoring the valuable XP that they offer. In particular, the alchemy and culinarian leaves are usually worth time grinding for cash. Some of these can earn you three to 6,000 gold per, which doesn't sound like much, but if your pockets are empty, it does end up being around 500,000 gil per maxed out guild leave uh, limit. So just don't leave that on the table like I did. Grind it, earn money, earn the XP, level up your classes. 
The last one is more of a matter of spreading a painful grind over as much time as possible. You don't really need to do this every day, but you should try to when you can. Because once you beat MSQ and you start to want to explore other systems like tribal quests, there's nothing more painful than spending a full month trying to complete just the tribes from A Realm of Born. The rewards are small, but they are exclusive, unless you want to dump some gold onto the marketplace. So try to get into the habit of squeezing these in when you can, because when you want to have them done and unlocked, you'll find yourself suddenly needing to focus on them for months at a time. There's only supposed to be five, but quick bonus for the mini cactpot. Go to the gold saucer and just do it every day. You don't need to think too hard about it. My strategy is just to scratch them off like this, and if it's possible, for there to be a jackpot of one, two, three, I go for that every single time. The odds of earning jackpot appeal to me way more than worrying about maximizing an extra hundred uh, gold coins here or there, or whatever they're called. What are they called? Gold coins? Put it here. Just, just put there, that, those. Just swing for the ten thousands. Like, it's better than not doing it at all. Anyway, that's it. If you found this video helpful, please make sure to leave a like or subscribe. As a small channel, it really does make all of the difference. Uh, and if you want to directly support the channel, there's a Patreon linked in the description below. As always, I'm so thankful for all of you who have decided to subscribe this early on. I hope you've been enjoying everything that we've been up to. We've got a lot more coming down the line. And for now, I think that's it. I'll see you next time.